Hi, I work at Rural Behavioral Health, and we serve um, clients. Um, we have psychiatrists who does medication management. We have therapists who do counseling services. We also have case management, and that's the part that I'm involved in. But through case management, we work with people with severe mental illnesses. And these are different than some other mental illnesses. These are um, difficult to treat illnesses that are usually lifelong chronic problems. Some of the things that our clients go through, and most of them, many of them are very, very poor. And so they have difficulty accessing treatment. Um, many of them have Medicaid and that helps, but they have difficulty accessing transportation is one of the things that I see all of the time. They need substance abuse treatment. They, as you mentioned, they don't have anyone to watch their children while they're going to that. Um, a lot of the groups are in the evening. They can't, there's no way to get there. They uh, have uh, problems uh, just going to the grocery store, which was amazing for me to find out that people had problems getting to the grocery store. And they said, well, they can walk. Well, have you ever tried to walk with three bags of groceries, you know, for, uh, you know, 30 blocks or five miles? Um, and we also work with a lot of clients that live in the surrounding communities that also have difficulties getting to um, Bolivar for services. Um, a lot of people, you talked about the substance abuse, and I think a lot of people start with substance abuse as a way to treat, kind of treat their mental illness before they realize there's medication. You hear voices. I was in a training one time, because I didn't really have an idea what it was like to be schizophrenic. I was in a training one time where we were given a board game to play, and we all had earphones in where there were conversations, different television conversations going on, complete with the lap reel. If you can imagine how difficult it is to play Monopoly when you have all of this, you know, like a Seinfeld episode going on in your ears so you can't hear what other people are talking about. And so uh, that, you know, that is a very um, difficult problem to overcome and learn how to deal with. So when that first starts happening to a person when they're in their teens or early 20s, they might think that uh, the best way is to get so drunk they pass out or to use other drugs so that they don't even have to think about it. And so it takes a long time, or I should say, but so that also integrates that substance abuse problem. And, um, the poverty uh, just seems to be like an increasing problem. Many of our clients live on uh, $720 a month. Uh, we have one fellow who would get $720 a month, but he has an outstanding student loan. So his is down to like $625. And just to me, to try to live and raise your family on $625 a month is just incredible. I think more uh, low-income housing. I think we could use a homeless shelter. It wouldn't have to be huge, with, but a little homeless shelter in Bolivar because we've had several clients that have had an episode of some time, some type where uh, maybe they didn't get their rent paid, they got evicted, and then had um, had to find some place to go and ended up at a homeless shelter in Springfield. Which living in Springfield doesn't sound like too big of a deal to me, but for someone who has lived in a small community all their life, sometimes that talking to them about that is just like talking to me about living in New York City. It is a huge difference for them. 